carry on with our featured director of the week, which is Mr. Wes Anderson. And we've each picked one of his favourite films to uh, talk about. Who are we going to start with? Let's start. Let's start with the an early film, shall we? So we'll go to Andy first with his choice. My choice is Rushmore. What's the secret, Max? The secret? I think you just gotta find something you love to do and then do it for the rest of your life. For me, it's going to Rushmore. Sharp little guy. He's one of the worst students we've got. So we're in 1989. It's Wes Anderson's second film as a director. A young lad in a high school falls in love with his teacher. He's pursuing her, as is an industrialist played by Bill Murray. It is a very early Wes Anderson film because it has a straightforward story. Yeah. It's very, very funny. It has a great soundtrack which is infused with British pop groups from the 60s and 70s. I watched it again today. There were some great lines in it, very, very funny indeed. And I just think that this is Wes Anderson showing what he's capable of in terms of telling a really good story from beginning to end. It's not flabby. It doesn't sort of uh, sink a little bit in the middle. Your, your attention is, is held throughout. And um, I just think that the film works really well to this day as a high school sort of movie uh, about love and dating people and sex and drugs and rock and roll. I think it's a really good, solid, entertaining film that may, that passed the sixth laugh test. Yes, indeed. It is a cracking film. I haven't yep. seen it since probably it came out. And I'd forgotten how good it was. Uh, Jason Schwartzman's first film. Yes. I mean, he's Say obviously... That, yeah gone on i don't he must have pictures of wes anderson in compromising position i think because he seems to have been just about in all of the wes anderson films but he's particularly good and particularly striking given that this is his debut in anything right it doesn't seem to have had any tv or anything else and, and he's almost in every scene as well yes yes uh, yeah. it carries the film really he and he um, it is a film. terrific performance yeah and and bill murray being bill murray uh, olivia williams yeah. as well as yeah, um, as miss cross the teacher she's she's lovely she's not overly glamorous maybe. glamorous sense, yes. right but she's just she's beautifully portrayed and brian cox as well as the director of the rushmore college yeah very very good have either of you guys seen Rushmore. No. It's arguably it's the most accessible Wes Anderson film yeah. of them all. And as yeah. Bob says, it is very, very funny, brilliantly acted, and quite straightforward, really. I mean, there's not anything that you would sort of say, well, that's a real director's flair. You know, he's trying to add, do this or that or slow things down or take shots from unusual angles. It's pretty straightforward. It is. And all the better for it because it's a good story. Yeah. It, I mean, it does have a few little Wes Anderson things that. Just a you couple, say, you but. See, oh, well, yeah. Well, that's, that's where these kind of titles came from. Have come from. Uh, yeah, there's, there's little, little hints there that says this is a yeah. Wes Anderson film. Yeah. Uh, and I love the fact that the school drama productions yes. are like mini-epic films <laughs> in their own right. It's like Tropic Thunder on the stage at one point. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was, that was beautiful. So that's a recommended yeah. for Emma and Scott, I think. It's streaming on Disney at the moment. Let's move on to Scott. What did you pick? The film I chose was Moonrise Kingdom. What am I looking at? He does watercolours, mostly landscapes, but a few nudes. So I'll hold my hands up a little bit on this one. I saw this film, probably I think it was during lockdown for the first time, and I was thinking about it just before starting the podcast, and I knew that I really enjoyed it. But then I was thinking I couldn't remember too much about the plot to, to speak about. I know that it was about a couple of kids in a camp that I think they fall in love, or at least sort of puppy dog love, and they run away and basically there's a search party on to find them. The reason I picked this and why I remember enjoying it so much is about the emotion that this one evoked. As I said with the other ones, that Wes Anderson's got this quirky style where people are almost unrealistic in the way they talk and act. For me, this one made me really feel something because I really liked the way the characters were written and the way they interacted with each other. I thought it felt very genuine and real, or real for Wes Anderson. And it's one that got under my skin and I felt 
that it was more mature than some of the other ones. Yeah, there's funny moments, but there's some real drama going on here. And yeah, so for me, that was the thing that I picked the most out of it. Of course, it looks amazing. It sounds amazing, that score again. Like, you just can't go wrong. And so that's the reason I went for Moonrise Kingdom as my pick. Mm. I must admit, it's a Wes Anderson film I've not seen. So it is one that I need to take a look at. Okay, Moonrise Kingdom. Okay, good recommendation. Emma, I what's your choice? Isle of Dogs. The Isle of Dogs. I don't think I can stomach any more of this garbage. Exactly. Same right. here. Words out of my mouth. Now I haven't had much experience with Wes Anderson's back catalogue. I knew they were always a little bit weird, and that was pretty much where I was at with it. So when I saw this one, I really loved the style of yeah the animations that were used, and you know throw dogs in anything, and I'm going to enjoy it anyway. But I just really loved the way. <laughs> It's been made so that you understand both sides of what's happening and how even though all of this bad stuff has happened to them, they still want to be man's best friend and obey commands and things. And it's just so, so lovely to, to watch the little uh, adventure they go on to try and find out the truth. I think had I seen one of his other ones first and not this one, I don't think I'd have been so open to to trying the other ones but yeah this is one that i do recommend to people okay good good choice and i can't believe that none of you picked this film so i jumped on it i mean i was going to go with rushmore because i really do love that film but i've gone with the grand budapest hotel you can't arrest him simply because he's a bloody immigrant oh, take your hands off my lobby boy i mean it, it is a little bit out there Wes Anderson at points because obviously the story is told as a kind of a flashback type of mechanism that wraps you into the story but once you get into the flashback it does tend to have a fairly linear sort of story flow which which is much preferable to me than the, the sort of jumpy jerky stuff that we had in some of his other films particularly the French Dispatch from was it last year or the year before last it had moments of absolute brilliance for me absolute brilliance but a lot of padding and chopping around that kind of just diluted that for me didn't get that with the grand budapest hotel i think it's a joyous film again alexander desplat's music is superb in that film ray fines uttering the line which we just heard in that clip get your hands off my lobby boy has to be one of <laughs> The, the best lines in cinema the whole cast again is terrific and the way in which they performed Willem Dafoe as the kind of terrible evil baddie character in the film it's just a delight for me and for me that's kind of peak Wes Anderson it's got all the style with the colour grading and the pastels and everything but it's also got some substance as well and it came together together well like you were saying Emma I think he's a real Marmite director and not just a Marmite <laughs> director for him but a Marmite director between each of his films yes he, he's an interesting character and an interesting director to to me I thought coming back to Asteroid City again one of the things I would love him to do is to co-direct a film with somebody co-direct a film with James Mangum <laughs> right so, <laughs> oh. so, so put Wes Anderson's style and his vision uh, and so on against somebody to say hang on a minute Wes here's the story this is where the story is going and if you could get the best of both worlds with Wes Anderson or rain Wes or Anderson we could in push it over the top a little and, bit to... coupling with Michael Bay I think that would be uh, that would be some <laughs> chaos I would like to watch <laughs> Michael Bay Wes Anderson yeah. Have you actually seen, but well, there's a fabulous version of Lord of the Rings, as if it had been directed by Wes Anderson, with AI-generated characters. Have you right, seen that? A few of those look it, look it up on YouTube. So that is our look at Wes Anderson. Four really good films, which I'd encourage you, dear viewer, to uh, look. Though, as we said, most of them are streaming on Disney. We had Rushmore, Moonrise Kingdom, Isle of Dogs, and we had the Grand Budapest Hotel.